can I think the mic is also working right perfect hi everyone I uh, just wanted to know how many of you are data scientists here okay just one or two I see mm -hmm. let's see if I can make it interesting for everyone else as well then uh, so let's get started uh, I hope you are all joining the conference today we'll learn about a Jupyter extension for Kubeflow pipelines, which can execute like seamlessly. So before starting, I'm Harshad Reddy Nalla. I'm a senior software engineer in OpenShift AI team in Red Hat, based out of Boston. Uh, prim primarily focusing on IDE development, so that entails like Jupyter Notebooks on cloud, uh, VS Code, R Studios, anything on cloud. So that's what we are focusing on. Uh, and then developing some developer tools for data scientists. Along with that, I'm contributing into the open source communities. So example like Open Data Hub, Kubeflow, and Elira. All three I have wrote that there because I'll be taking you three, all the three of them today. So starting with this, like today we'll go through what the AIML lifecycle is. That's particularly what you do every day. So we'll go through that and, and focus on one aspect of it. That's the model development cycle. And we'll go through that. And then understand what's Kubeflow and go through if we can execute things directly from Jupyter Notebook without having the data scientists to learn what Jupyter, what Kubeflow pipelines are uh, and don't have to do that engineering, et cetera. And then we'll, I'll show you what Elira is. is that's the Jupyter extension which we have developed. And then I'll take you through a demo. So perfect, let's get started. So the AIML, in the AIML lifecycle, we have normally, everyone sets a goal, then go through preparing the data. After data preparation, you start developing the model. While you're developing the model, there are a lot of things which you do, training, testing, you do the refining and keep on doing that. While you're doing that, uh, once you have a generated a model, you try to deploy that, and then based on a deployment, you have some inference, and then start to do, get the metrics out of them, right? So today, but uh, like to do this, we have a lot of tools available online. Uh, the popular ones are Kubeflow pipelines, sorry, Kubeflow itself, the community provides a lot of tools, toolings for all the actions which are provided there, but we'll be majorly focusing on only the gather part and the development, and the developing of ML models. Uh, there are two logos on the right side, one for Kubeflow and for Open Data Hub. So Kubeflow, with its name, it already tells it's corresponding to Kubernetes, and Open Data Hub is, we primarily work on OpenShift, which is from Red Hat, so we focus on that, but both of them will provide a large number of tools which you can use for any of those aspects on the top. So focusing on to the model development life cycle, as I showed you, like we are going, like a data scientist is going through a lot of process like preparing, developing, training, and testing. So where do they start? They start from a Jupyter notebook. That's de facto today. Like a lot of people are starting to start from that basic, even if you go for any courses in the colleges, they will start you from Jupyter notebooks to try to get you to do some cell work and to do some of those model development. Once you have that, you can build it into an application. There are other tools as well, like RStudio is getting popular, VS Code is getting popular, you're working on that and developing tools through that, right? As you can see, there is a lot of steps a data scientist is doing, but, but what happens in case when you want to do it for a large data set or you wanna do a lot of things in parallel? So that computation is what Kubeflow pipeline brings in. You can do a workflow, which you can work uh, which we can build and you can run it in parallel while you're doing that. So you don't have to wait on your Jupyter notebook for 15, 20 minutes or a day just because you want it running a data set which is taking that much time or model uh, development or tra training is taking that much time. So you can put that into a ML workflow and just keep it running in parallel while you're doing other stuff. So as a data scientist, that's the capability which you want to gain, right? So uh, that's where the Kubeflow came into existence. Kubeflow was a community project which started in 2018. Uh, it was announced in KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. And then they, they got into the CNCF family in 2023. Uh, they have a lot of tools, but I've only focused on a few of them. But like uh, going through them, there's Kubeflow Notebooks. It's a notebook controller which can manage uh, multiple notebooks in a cluster for a set of data, data scientists or for any ML engineers. The, that goes into uh, model development cycle. Then there's Kubeflow pipeline, which can take care of the whole ML workflow. There's training operator for specifically hyperparameter tuning or training on those kind of things. And there's case for model serving. Uh, we'll be focusing on Kubeflow just to go through that to learn what that is. So 
with Qflow, what they have developed is an end-to-end -end workflow model where as a data scientist, you can learn uh, what you want to develop. Once you have developed that, you can convert them into ML workflows. Uh, for example, like you have cleaning, first you start with a data cleaning. So that's a process which you have developed. So that source code, you can convert it into a pipeline. It's an ML workflow pipeline. You can add that and you can connect it to a, your tr uh, development model, what you've done, and you can then connect it to a training pipeline. So it can go, a complete pipeline can exist as a ML workflow and you can iteratively run on that. So the two methodologies which they have provided for uh, data scientists or ML engineers is one, because everyone likes Python, they have supported Python with the Python SDK. So you can write a Python SDK with, uh, and directly write the Python SDK so you can write that as a code and you can execute your pipelines. Another is directly through uh, YAML. So that's for the ML engineers, that's where we come in. So for DevOps and anything, directly if you provide a YAML, it becomes easier for deployment and stuff. So that's the support they have. Uh, they have a very static configuration. They have a different configuration. Uh, right now, the backend is running on Argo workflows, but there is another uh, another project which works on specifically getting into Tekton. So there's Qflow Tekton as well, if you are interested in Tekton. But we'll be focusing on Argo, staying with the community. Uh, so, what, uh, so where does Elara come into existence? Like I showed you, like, what the difficulty our data scientists will fee, face here is they would have to write, once they have developed their models, they have to again learn how the Kubeflow SDK works. They have to learn that, they have to re-implement everything on top of it to execute that, which is a burden process. Like maybe the data scientist doesn't want to take that into, uh, like into the consideration. So uh, this project came into existence, Alira. So what they have done is they have pro created a Jupyter extension for this product. Uh, so here you can, they provide a visual editor, so you can directly drag and drop your notebooks without having to do anything, and it will take care of it. We'll get into the details on how it does, how it do, uh, how it does that, and we can uh, explore that in a minute. So this product uh, project was started in 2020. Uh, so it's a it's a small community still growing. Uh, they have taken a hit because of the uh, whole. Uh, layoffs and things going on, but like this, the community exists and everyone is uh, contributing to it. It's uh, And you can also help around if you'd like to join the community. Uh, so they focus on three aspects. They're providing uh, running this ML workflows either in Kubeflow pipelines, or there's another ex uh, alternative Airflow. So you can do that Airflow as well if you're interested in. And if you want to just run it on your local uh, and you don't want to touch any of these, you can directly do that as well with this visual editor. Uh, they provide some additional toolings. Uh, there's Python, R, and Scala editors, so you can directly write code and edit them. Uh, but today's, con uh, today's uh, topic is more for focused on the pipeline visual editor. So what is happening in the background? So when the data, so data scientists will be given a form, like in a, it's in a Jupyter notebook when they're developing, they can drag and drop their notebooks, connect it, uh, so like, let's say you have one notebook where you're just data cleaning and you want to pass that data to the next model development stage, you can just drag and drop and connect them together. And then that would be the, you know, that would be the input for the front end. The front end has written its own pipeline YAML, uh, which is uh, the output for uh, the front end, which is passed to the Alara backend. Alara backend is entirely uh, using the paper mill. So it's what it does, it reconstructs uh, 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 Qflow pipeline using paper mill so that it can uh, it can submit that to Qflow servers. So Qflow pipeline server can be deployed and then you can just directly interact from Jupyter Notebook to Qflow pipeline server and can execute that. So to, to give you some, like I'm a visual learner, so to give you visuals, like this is what a data scientist will do. Like there would be a notebook, uh, so there would be a Jupyter Notebook running and then you have some notebooks written like the, you have done, gathering the data, that's, uh, that's the first step, then you're cleaning, then you're doing analysis, and also doing, in parallel, you're trying to do some prototyping, right? So uh, you can see it's just connecting those dots, and then you can submit it to pipeline, just clicking with a one click, so you don't have to learn anything apart from just your day-to-day -day job of doing model development. So this, uh, uh, we'll see it in action a few seconds. In 2023, end of 2023, uh, the Qflow pipeline came up with V2 version of it. So V1 version was focusing on data management. 
Uh, so basically that means is when you're connecting one node to another, you want to pass that data together. So the data management aspect was very big. So they wanted, uh, they choose to go with the S3 object storage. So whenever you're connecting a notebook, uh, sorry, a node to another, you are passing the data through S3 and other, other node can get, gather that information and use that. Uh, with the V2, they wanted to support uh, tracing of pipelines and runs. So they use the ML metadata. So this is now incorporated into V2. So the, this required a lot of changes in the API itself. So they changed the pipeline spec. It's, uh, it's now an uh, uh, in, independent rep pipeline representative YAML. Uh, we'll see that in a second as well. And then they changed the SDK as well to not to do the abundance of uh, API calls which they were doing. They tried to club them together and put together uh, newer API calls, which uh, made the SDK much more faster. So with this, uh, we had to upgrade the Elira as well to go to V2 version of it, and that's where we contributed from our team, and that's the uh, important aspect which we tried to get that this year. And now it's available as another package, and you can try to use that and check it out. So this is what the difference from V1 to V2 is in terms of pipeline spec. Initially, they were directly using the Argo workflows pipelines, but now they have written their own pipeline spec so that uh, they can intermediately add additional features into it, uh, so like data caching and other aspects. So all these details are uh, can be specified into pipeline spec, but this could be a mundane task for to learn and to grasp this, right? Like you have to, if you have to rewrite everything for your ML workflow. So similarly, the SDK was also changed. They clubbed a lot of functions together so that it can become much more faster, uh, and they have removed few of these components. Uh, so directly you can do a lot of actions with one single uh, change. So uh, all these changes were needed to be incorporated into Elira. So what we did is we started to rewrite a few of these functionalities in Elira. So we took out all the API calls which were made to V1, op, uh, V1 apply, uh, pipeline server, and we converted them all into the V2 standards. Uh, for this, we had to go through the pipeline spec, pipeline runs, and all those functionalities which were presented there, and we edited them out and converted that to V2 standards. Uh, Elira also gives you ability to export the Python DSL or the YAML directly, so that if you don't if you don't want to submit it through Elira, you can grab this export. Uh, you can export these values and then submit it yourself directly to the pipeline server as well. So that had that also needed some changes because those standards were also changed. So especially the how the output artifacts were included or the volume amounts were changed. So we included those uh, changes. We only uh, primarily focused on Argo changes. Uh, we will be getting onto the Tekton as well, uh, but that's the part which is coming in, upcoming now. Uh, as we did that, we introduced the changes we have already pushed it for the upstream community. It's still in review, but we have got a package just for us to try. So it's ODH Alara. You can download and install it, and you can be able to play with that around. With all this information, maybe it's time to show you how it works. Maybe you can uh, go through that. So I I work for Open Data Hub community primarily. So this uh, product project is um, using everything on OpenShift, so you can deploy any uh, any of those components onto OpenShift and use them. So it, it serves for all model development, model serving, and uh, all the model registry, and all those concepts are here. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, it's available in the operator hub. So in terms of demo, I have a OpenShift cluster which I've installed. Uh, in this cluster, uh, you can just go to operator hub, search for open data hub, uh, simple enough. Like once you've searched that, you can install this particular package uh, operator. Once you've installed, you need to, the operator needs some instances, so it, it's very flexible. You can pick and choose what you want to use. If you're, if you're not interested in model serving, you don't need to install that. You don't need to put pressure on the resources. So there is, uh, all these components which you can use and remove whichever you want to. So today we are just picking the workbenches, uh, the UI, and the data science pipeline, which is Kubeflow pipeline. So we'll just be installing those three. 
Uh, once you have done this, it will install all the three controllers for you, and it should be ready to use now. All this is a one click, and you should be able to directly use that. You will get a, a route which can take you to the dashboard. Once you're in the dashboard, this uh, has a lot of things here, but like focusing on to just for pipelines, workbenches, and things, uh, you can create your own namespace. So for this conference, I've already created one, so DevConf. Here, what we need to start with is our data connection. So as I said, like everything needs a S3 connection, so you need to add that there. You can add AWS itself, or you can switch to a menu server, so I've created already one for us, a menu server. Once you have created a data connection, you need to start and import a pipeline. Uh, so creating a pipeline is pretty straightforward. You just need to give them, uh, pass that data connection which you have set. Once it's created, you will be all set and you'll get, uh, in that namespace, you will be able to see uh, some of these data science pipe, so the Qflow pipelines, uh, application threads, so you can see all these pipeline servers set up, starting up. Once you have that, uh, you're all set, you can go and create a workbench. Uh, I have one already for running, but I can show you how you can create one. So you can give it any name, so starting with DevConf. Uh, there is multiple notebooks available to select from, uh, whichever you want to use. Uh, if you're, uh, so each notebook comes with a set of packages already pre-installed with ODHL IRA or LILA in it, so you can directly use the directly use it without having to do much more uh, changes. Uh, there are all these uh, images containing different packages, so the data science will have minimal uh, NumPy, SciPy, all those kind of things. So once you have selected that, uh, if you want to add any environment variables or any other cluster storage, uh, my cluster is a little small, so let me keep it a little uh, slow, uh, smaller value for this. Uh, once you have done that, you can create the workbench. It takes few seconds uh, to start. The pod will be generated on the background. You will be able to browse through it. Uh, while that's happening, I've already created one. Uh, let's go through that. So, as you can see, uh, the Elara is pre-installed for you, uh, but if you want, you can also install it in your own image and you can import that image to Open Data Hub and use that. Once you do this, you can create your own pipelines. So I have an example which I'm gonna use today, but you can create your own notebooks. So for example, the uh, first one is like gathering the data set. So we are gathering the information on what we need to download. Uh, once you have done that, we are passing this information to the next uh, data cleaning step. So this is what a data scientist would do, right? Like you would write these things, you will execute one in each cell one at a time and then go through this execution. But if you want to convert this into a pipeline and you want to run it multiple times, it's straightforward. You can go back to the launcher. Uh, you can just drag and drop these. As you can see, uh, you need to connect uh, what inputs and outputs are. Once you do that, it will take those information. Apart from this, you're seeing some requirements here. So basically it requires, because it's running on a uh, Kubernetes, so it requires a runtime image. So uh, you can right click on it and you can go to properties to add that runtime image. So for example, for data cleaning, you probably doesn't don't require an image with a uh, lot of things installed, pre-installed in it, so you can choose on a different image than what you're actually running on, so you can reduce that resource requirements there, so you can say like, I just want a base image which for uh, data cleaning, because I don't wanna do much, but for data, uh, sorry, for data cleaning, you wanna do something else, for data modeling, you wanna do something else, so you can choose whatever runtime image you wanna require for. So once you do that, there are a lot of other uh, functions which you can set up, like for example, how much resources do you wanna give for each? So you have that control on your side. Uh, you would also have control on annotations, properties, uh, adding environment variables. All these comes handy, like especially the secrets, like if you wanna provide some 
credentials to any of your application, you can just do that directly there. So with this, uh, let's start execution. Uh, there is a completely built pipeline which I've added here. Uh, I've added all the runtime images and things like that. With this, once you're ready, you just need to click one button, run pipeline. Uh, it'll give you a name. You can name it whatever you want. And you can execute that. Once you execute, it gives you the, it'll take you to the UI and also to the object storage, with the, all the details which had, it has uh, stored for. So here you can see the, yeah, here you can see the execution. Uh, each execution will take ample amount of time based on whatever it, the action it is performing. And uh, you can check uh, what was the input, what was all the task it's doing, and also log at the same time. Uh, this can give you that function, uh, like functionality to explore all the, all the work which you have been doing and you can explore those things. Uh, with this, like each ex execution might have some steps where you're storing the data into S3. So you can explore that also. Uh, so we named it DefConf. So it has created a, already a folder with all the details in it. So it's ex uh, so it also stores all the metadata with along with the whatever data you have been collecting. So you can directly explore it here. Uh, once all the pipeline has executed, uh, you can explore it. I already have few already pre-run, so you can see them. You will explore all these details. Uh, Qflow pipeline itself has a lot of functionality, so you can do multiple experiments at the same time. And in each multiple experiments, you can have multiple pipelines. Pipelines can have different tasks, and you can execute all those things. So all these can be executed here. This has this is from the open data, but you can do the same in Kubernetes through Qflow. Qflow has a similar UI, uh, Qflow pipelines UI, and Qflow pipeline itself. So you can just directly install and uh, use this directly. With that, um, let's go back. With that, I think uh, I have presented what I had. And these are some references if you are really interested in working in Open Data or contributing to Elira. It's all up for grabs. Like there is a new requirement for migrating to Jupyter Lab 4. As you know, like Jupyter Lab 4 has been launched few, uh, last year, and you can tightly contribute to using that and converting these things and start using it into Jupyter 4. Uh, that's it. Any questions, let me know. I'm here. Yes. Have you uh, used this in any of the managed OpenShift configurations? Uh, there is a managed con uh, OpenShift configuration already which has this capability. The Elira, specifically. Elira, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's that's a part I was uh, curious about. And then, are you able to use this on a like on a designated machine set? Like a like for example, any GPUs and accelerators like that. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. there is the there is this option already here. Like you can when you're executing, you can specify which GPU you want to provide it for. So you just need to have a node in your cluster, and once you have that, you can directly. Uh, access that. There's a lot of capability which Open Data has also built. So there's an accelerator profile uh, that you can set up. Uh, uh, so you can set up all those information in this. Uh, let me find that. So there's this page, accelerator profiles. This is like an admin settings because not all data scientists know about it. So the admin admin can set it up for the data scientists, and the data scientists can just choose it and use that any accelerator they want. So there are capabilities. We are already providing some images like CUDA and stuff. So you have that drivers installed. I don't know if uh, your team have already tried it out to kind of integrate this with the um, OpenShift Lightspeed. A Lightspeed, not yeah. yet, yeah. Uh, so um, have you seen the demo of OpenShift Lightspeed? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, the maybe this can be integrated with the OpenShift Lightspeed because they have a dialog window on the right bottom corner. Right. That uh, uh, they using the uh, some retrieval augmented generation technique 
uh, when user provides some uh, inputs, they, I mean, they have a, in the backend, it's still monitoring the dashboard. Right. And, uh, and uh, they combine with the user inputs and feed into the third party large language models and uh, to, uh, for querying. And uh, when they collect the, the results, uh, they, they will provide to the user. But I was thinking that maybe uh, the whole pipeline in like um, Elira, I, I don't know the name, but uh, yeah. it can be integrated with that also, that uh, um, taking the user input as instructions and uh, configuring yeah. automatically in the backend. Absolutely, yeah. Seems like something. Also, in the, uh, the workflow, can we select any arbitrary model so yeah, like it's a notebook, so you can put any uh, arbitrary model into your notebook, and then you can drag and drop and use that. Uh, we can use any arbitrary model, any yeah. arbitrary data sets, we yeah. can, or any arbitrary um, yeah, evaluation metrics. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the biggest benefits of the this one is auto deployment, or? Sorry? The biggest benefits of uh, the... So. Uh, yeah, it's like the benefit Benefit here is like everything is happening in parallel. So technically, if you don't have the capability in a Jupyter Notebook, which has resources, uh, maybe you don't have the enough resources in, in your Jupyter Notebook for executing all the steps, right? Uh -huh. So you can execute it in pipelines and distribute that into smaller workloads. And you can distribute that resource. In that way, you'll get that. Yeah. And it's deploying onto a cluster. So there is a pod, pod spec and all those things. So you get that capability of segregating the parts. So everything's running inside the containers? Yeah. Okay, I see. Thanks. Perfect, any other questions? Awesome, uh, I guess I completed the talk a little early, but thank you all. Thank That's you pretty much it. Thank Thanks a lot.